Dear Reddit, what's your best drunk story? It was getting towards the end of the night, and we were en route to a strip club for reasons I still can't figure out. We were driving with the windows cracked and smoking cigarettes. At this point, I was over half a fifth of Maker's Mark in, and I could feel that all too familiar feeling. I was about 10 seconds from unleashing a hot and smelly tsunami of vomit all over the back seat of this enclosed vehicle. Thinking quickly, I formed a plan in my drunken and panicked mind. Alex. It's so hot back here, can you open my window a little more? It's happening. For some reason, I get it in my head that they can't find out that I'm going to drain everything in my body onto the sidewalk. This secret must go with me to the grave. Alex. I love this song. Can you turn it up? I had never heard this song in my life, but no one was suspicious, so the plan forged on. I then unleashed a torrent of bile so violent that it rivaled the pea soup scene in The Exorcist. I finished my barf and reveled in the fact that I had done it. No one knew, and I was free. We got out of the car and proceeded to walk into the club and enjoy an hour of watered-down drinks and painted boobs. As we're approaching the car, I hear it. A scream of rage disgust. With little to no foresight, I assumed the vomit would land on the ground, despite us driving 40 miles per hour on a highway. His car looked like someone hosed it down with exclusively post-pizza vomit. I needed an escape, so I did the only thing I could think of at the time. I was even more enraged. I couldn't believe that someone could be that disrespectful. I entertained the idea that it was probably the loud frat guys who left before us, those assholes. Or bums. We just don't know. To this day, no one knows that was me and I regret nothing. TLDR got too drunk. Barfed all over the side of my friend's car going 40 miles per hour, lied. Blamed it on hobos or frat boys. It totally worked. So it's my first lads holiday ever and I'm 17 and we've gone off to Portugal for the week. Now us being poor young kids we saw we could save about a tenner flying out on the Thursday rather than the Friday so we did that, knowing full well we couldn't get into our accommodation until the following day. We were cocky though and thought we could just stay out all night maybe crash on the beach for fun or whatever. Anyway skip to the night we get in and we go out on the lash getting battered. My mate paid for our travel insurance so everyone owed him 6 euros which he kept reminding us of. At some point in the night I flipped my cigarette and it ended up in his beer so I now owed him 6 euros and a beer. The night goes on and we end up around 1am going to a shop and buying some more bottles of wine to go to a beach party. Head on down there and 8 of the lads get in but they won't let me and my mate in because we have glass bottles. They're all gone so we're like F it we'll just wander around Portugal and see what's going on. We stumble around drinking our wine, walk about 3 miles away from this beach middle of absolute nowhere. Think about sleeping in a bus stop but there were these mangy dogs out there. My mates started yelling at them stupid dogs this is my house Kemasabi, and then this Dalmatian looking dog starts walking and growling towards us so we like it. We eventually stumble across a villa resort of sorts so we jump the fence to the pool and find a couple of deck chairs and snuggle on down to a nice sleep. Wake up an hour later to this lovely lady putting a duvet on us, whisper thank you all shivering my ass off. Awaken the next day feeling like absolute ass, but who do we see coming over to us, our mates we lost at the beach 3 miles away. Turns out they ended up walking around too and slept on some deck chairs just across the pool from us. One lad comes over completely naked explaining that in his drunken logic he thought the sprinklers might come on and he would be colder in his wet clothes than in his skivvies. So we're hanging out and dying and then one mate just says do you remember what you owe me, at this point every one of us just yells 6 euros and a beer. Me and some friends had dressed up as Spice Girls for an event. We were 5 and out of those, 3 were guys. So us guys wore makeup, wig, tights, and so on fitting each of our characters. We looked like S. Before leaving the pre-party, I get the brilliant idea to finish the last few drops in my bottle of vodka, no biggie. This turned out to be more than a mouthful, and I ended up taking 4 shots right before leaving the house. Mind you this was after a few hours of pre-partying. We hop on our bicycles and head to the club, how I got in is a mystery. That's where my memory of the night takes a break, but there are lots of photo evidence that I was indeed inside and dancing very s. Fast forward some hours someone is shaking my shoulder as I am sitting outside with my head in my lap. Turns out a couple has found me sitting on my own outside, and thinking I was a girl that they'd help me home. They were in for a surprise when I lifted my head. Anyhow since I couldn't say much they sat me down on the back of the guy's bike and took me to their home where they let me sleep on the couch. Next day I wake up with the worst headache and they explain where I am and how I ended up there. Totally ashamed I thank them for taking care of me and put my shoes on, thus finding my wardrobe ticket for my coat that I left at the club the night before. I knew I had placed it somewhere smart. So I walk home in my sporty spice costume and wait for the club to reopen the next night. Monday morning in school was a mix of filled holes in my memory and a lot of shame. I went out with a couple of friends one night, after a long S shift at my S retail job. 
Things were great, it was actually a really awesome night. Tequila and beer were flowing, great conversations, and cool people. Well, the time came for us to leave, there were seven of us, so we stumbled out of the bar and through the parking lot towards our cars. This was when we heard it. Some K in a VW Golf GTI decided to peel out of his parking and speed out of the premises. He headed straight for us, who conveniently, were lined up like dominoes, me being the last domino, in the car's path. The D didn't even bother slowing down, one by one my friends barely managed to dodge the car, until it was my turn. I see the car coming in to side, F it, I'm gonna jump over. It didn't work that way, the car knocked me about a meter to the side and I landed on my knee and chin. My shoes flew off my feet from the impact. The F.A. didn't even stop the car, just kept going. So there I lay, just hit by a car. Whispering winded curse words to ease my pain. My friends rush over thinking I'm dying, and I'm like yo, give me a F moment, please, I just got hit by a car. After a while, I look up and see a crowd surrounding me. One of my friends comes close to me, slips my shoes back on, and says, My guy, the ambulance is gonna get here soon. You know you don't have medical aid. So you can go to the public hospital and wait 9 hours to be helped. Or, you can try walking it off, come to my place, and smoke the massive joint I rolled this morning. Bystanders ended up calling three ambulances. They asked me if I was okay, I said I think so and showed them I could walk, limp. My knee was super swollen, chin was bleeding, but nothing broken. I limped over to my friend's car and we ended up getting high at his house the rest of the night. I got super lucky and was all healed up by two weeks later. My manager did not believe my story when I cancelled my shift the next day, though. I'll go with a fairly PG one, went back to visit friends at uni, turns out my friend has been dating a girl there for a couple of months, and they still haven't done it. Me, him, and a bunch of old friends proceed to get just obliterated. We walk to the local coffee shop, somehow I got my food before they even got there, so I'm smashed, sitting on the curb, eating a chili. They walk in, and while they're in line, a police cruiser pulls up next to me, lights on. F, I think, and I make a stupid, drunken call run for it. So I'm getting chased by two cops, carrying a bowl of chili, and I'm just F going for it. I don't remember how it all went down, but I come to in a gravel pit, hiding behind a pile of rock, holding an empty chili bowl, covered in chili. I waited out a bit, stick my head out, and realize I'm not too far from the dorms. I turn my shirt inside out, knock on my buddy's place, and stumble in. They're clapping and cheering and high-fiving me for outrunning the cops. I ask my buddy to let me shower in his dorm. He gives me the okay and leaves me the key to lock up when I'm done. I wait for him to go, scribble sleep at your girlfriend's place on a piece of paper, and tape it to the wall. Lock goes the door, passed out goes me. He was mad that night, but was pretty happy in the morning after finally sleeping with her. Everyone wins. I told my wife about my best friend's bachelor party the day after it happened. Spent the day on a pontoon boat on a lake drinking and smoking weed. Then we went for dinner at the lodge we were staying at. After dinner, there was more drinking and a stripper. I then proceed to tell her that someone at the party slapped the stripper's ass while she was giving another guy a lap dance. She freaks out and grabs the beer bottle out of the hand of the guy she was giving a lap dance and is about to hit the guy that slapped her ass in the head with it. Someone grabs it out of her hand and she is talked down and calms down. Crisis averted and we all continue on the night and have a good time. Fast forward a few weeks and my wife and I are having dinner with my best friend and his fiance. My wife starts talking about what happened there and my best friend looks at me and yells it was you. Apparently, I was so drunk and stoned that I didn't realize it was me that did this, but remember that it happened. Was 19 and enjoying visiting various friends in their first year of uni cheap beer and easy weed. It was heaven. On one legendary visit where we caught the train up and started hitting it hard from 10 a.m., friend took out a light bulb from the light fitting and threw it at my head. It smashed. I chased him through the dicks and he jumps on a bed to get the high ground. I lift the bed up and squash him against the wall, putting a large friend-shaped hole in the plaster. Condom water ballooned a random group from our third story window. It was the local rugby club. They were not happy and started trying to kick the door down. We escape off the back fire escape and go into town. We find an old England pub with heavy oak tables. It is karaoke time. We get into the habit of getting on top of the table to dance and sing to the really good songs. Beer is spilling everywhere, table is soaked. I am slow getting up on the table when Robbie Williams Angels comes on. I put both feet in a beer puddle. I score a perfect strike of people, knocking everyone off the table and onto the floor. Beer, bodies, and broken drinks everywhere. Strangely, there are no injuries and we are not asked to leave. We finish the song, nailing the high notes by the way, and I buy another round for everyone.
We are asked to leave when one of my friends goes up on the mic and starts licking it like a cornetto. Refuses to stop. DJ is very upset. Staggering down a very steep cobbled street, I hit a pothole. I stagger sideways, trying to regain balance. All I succeed in doing is increase my crab velocity. I slam into this front door. I either busted off the lock or it was open. Either way, I am in the house fast, sliding down a tiled corridor on my belly, and I come to stop by the lounge door. I lock eyes with the terrified family who were all watching a game show until I exploded into their lives. Nothing is said. After an awkward five seconds, I pick myself up, slur an apology, and run. We go for a walk along the river to cool off. Someone wraps a fatty bombity and now I am out of control. I cannot stand without help but insist that a kebab will fix me right up. I fall over in a busy takeaway queue at least five times, but I get my kebab. It does help a bit. On the walk back to the dorms, I see a nice hedge. There was this craze called bushwhacking back then, which basically entailed hurling yourself over a hedge into a field. Yeah, teenagers are weird. But my beer slash weed slash kebab addled brain sees this garden hedge and that's all the connection I needed. Over I go at speed. I slam into this white plastic sun lounger thing. It part smashes under the assault and my arms and upper torso are stuck in this thing. I am now one with the sun lounger. I manage to stand up with it still attached and run out the gate my friends have opened to retrieve me. I insist on wearing the sun lounger back to the dorms. I then pass out on it and sleep the sleep of the dead on slashing it. Dear God though the train journey back was hell. Hot, crowded, no seats left, and the worst hangover of my life. Also several minor cuts and a lot of bruises. My kebab ass only made matters worse. We made the local student paper for the table strike and Mike licking thing though. Alright, I got one. This story is about 40% my memory of the night and 60% other people telling me what happened, as is accustomed for good drunk stories. In college, my friends and I got invited to this girl's, Lacey for this story, 21st birthday party. It was at this huge house that was bought for her by our Scrooge McDuck of a father and was shared with four other girls. It always seemed like Lacey had a bit of a crush on me, so I saw this as an opportune time for some boinkin. Anyways, we get to the party and are bombarded with shots of the girl's drink of choice that night, Fireball. Down the hatch, one shot, two shots, eight. After making it through the gauntlet of shots and countless drinking games, I'm properly shwasty pants. I've been talking to Lacey for a bit and things are going pretty good when I get the feeling. I excuse myself and casually walk up to my buddy Seth and in the most calm manner tell him, follow me. Without explanation, I walk out to the backyard and just begin exorcising the alcohol demons from my stomach all over their yard. Seth is standing on the back porch laughing his ass off and decides to start filming. The video is me just walking around the backyard, casually talking about how Lacey and I would be a great couple and hurling every 5 feet or so. After a while, I decide to head back to the party and try to talk to Lacey again. Can't find her. Start talking to one of her roommates, Josie will say, about how I think Lacey and I might be good together. She starts feeding me more shots. Then my stomach decides it's not done with me. I tell Josie that I'm going to puke again and run outside, this time to the front yard. I take off running, not wanting to puke in front of everyone, and collapse in a random yard and let myself go. After a few disgusting minutes, I look up to see an old lady sitting on her porch smoking and watching me violate her yard. I say yes, M, and try to get up and walk again but collapse and decide to crawl. I decide I'm going to crawl back home and start the journey. All of a sudden, Josie catches up with me and has brought me a huge bottle of water. We sit on the curb for a while, I puke a few more times, drink lots of water, and I'm finally able to stand up and walk Josie decides she's going to walk home with me and that's when I pretty much black out. I do remember two things from the rest of the night, me telling her I once had an allergic reaction to brownies and then sexy times with her back at my house. Blacked. The next morning I wake up in my bed half wearing my TMNT onesie, a half-eaten pizza in my bed, what looks like spilled Kool-Aid in my bed, and a naked Josie right next to me. When she woke up I asked the usual, what happened last night? She then told me that when we were walking home I told her I needed to grab some things in Walmart and proceeded to casually purchase a DiGiorno's pizza, the movie E.T., and a box of condoms. She then said when we got home the first thing I did was put on my TMNT onesie and make the pizza. She said after that it was kind of a blur and then we were in bed. We ate the rest of the pizza that morning and watched E.T. TLDR party time and puked my guts out, but still smashed thanks to the best turtle, Michelangelo. Kaobonga. Former bartender here. The pub I worked at was also my local, so if I wasn't in there working, I was in there drinking. 
It was a small, local pub, so it was mostly the same people you see night after night including a nice bunch of dudes from the car garage next door. Anyway, one night I'm there and I'm already pretty hammered on premium beer and brandy chasers. I'm sitting on a stool at the bar itself, my usual spot, and from there I spot the guys from the garage next door. They're having their own little celebration for something, and the one dude orders a round of tequilas, including one for me. I down the tequila in good spirits and we're all having a laugh. I call them all pee as they're coughing and spluttering from the tequila while I manage to not flinch at all. I challenge them to something harder than green chartreuse. Now, if you've never had chartreuse, it's a very, very strong herbal taste, the kind of drink that instantly makes you take a sharp intake of breath, and the kind of syrupy texture that sticks to the inside of your mouth. I order a round of these, we all knock it back, and of course, this time I flinch too. Only now I can feel that saliva building under my tongue and waves of heat crashing over me. I go to say something and puke ferociously all over myself, the bar, the bar stool, the carpet, and some on one of the garage doors. My manager had to call my parents to come pick me up in front of the whole pub. There were a few laughs at my expense the next day when I had to drag my ass to work. TL, chartreuse is made by monks, made me blow chunks in public. Had a particularly rough shift, so I decided to have a drink when I got home. Got home, noticed I was short on work clothes, so I started a load of laundry. My brother was up, so I asked him to shuffle the laundry for me so I would have clothes ready for my next shift. I didn't have a glass in my room, just a bottle of rum. I took a nice big swig and looked at the bottle, barely made a dent, I can do better. Took a second swig, looked at the bottle, half of it's left. Well, s, work's gonna suck tomorrow. I go to bed. I wake up, look at my phone and notice that I had been texting my ex, basically saying how badly I f up and I regret everything and want nothing more than ever back. What I said was true, but I'm awfully embarrassed that I said it drunkenly and have no recollection of saying it. I then stumble out of my room, see my brother. Me, hey man, did you shuffle the laundry? Him, no, mom said you did it. Me, what? No, I went straight to bed. Him, yeah, she said you were downstairs in nothing but underwear doing your laundry. I go downstairs, sure enough, laundry is done. Left for work, went on a date with my previously mentioned ex the next day. We're back together. TLDR, I'm a surprisingly productive blackout drunk. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now, 